This one input to the syscall, what's put into RDX, is actually there to prevent buffer overflows from happening. But we need to explicitly tell the read syscall how many bytes will allow it to read in because it doesn't know the size of the buffer. So in this one, like I have intentionally programmed this improperly in assembly where I'm going to allow uh, 1023 bytes to come in, but we only have 512 on the stack allocated. So this is where in the program, this vulnerability actually happens of like the poor coding. When this call gets run or when this call gets executed, what it's going to do is it's actually going to push onto the stack the return address of what's next. This is where that fundamental issue comes into play is that in the memory somewhere above the stack is where the next instruction is going to be executed. There's lots of protections in place, right? To try and stop that from being written to or accessed or jumped to code that it shouldn't. But like at the core of how processors work, like modern processors right now, it always, there's no way to, there's no way around that. So because of that, then with our exploit, if we overwrite the size of the stack plus eight, which is the caller's base pointer, if we write anything past that, it's going to go to the space in memory where the return address is. So when the when the program returns, so if, if we actually go back to here to overflow me, so when we come here and we call return, essentially what this is doing is it's going to, it goes and looks and grabs the address off of the stack, above the stack that was written, and it jumps to that. So it puts it in the instruction pointer. So that's essentially in a stack smashing attack and stack overflows what how we're going to uh, impact this. Because once you have control over the instruction pointer, then at that point, now you have control over what the program is going to do.